What's good, boxing fans? This is your man Wood. This is the Bite Down Boxing uh, dot com podcast slash podcast uh, post Canelo versus Triple G two reaction. Um, first of all, I hope everybody had a great night watching the fight. I thought it was pretty exciting. I thought it out. Uh, it outdid the first fight. Um, just looking at the card, I think the card was a disappointment. Um, but I'm proud for myself. I went to the theater and only paid $20, $20.50. Uh, didn't even hit up the snack bar too much. Got a drink or two. Maybe spent another $10. Came out of his short $30 to see a great night of fights versus paying $95 or $85 or whatever it was. If it was another $10 for the um, the HD at the house. So I'm good. I don't have no, you know, I don't have any buyer's remorse at the end of the month. Um, but let's get into the card. Uh, salute to uh, Roman uh, Gonzalez coming back, getting the fifth round stoppage with a beautiful uh, right hand. Um, you know, fight facing a guy that was stopped in the first round uh, back at the beginning of the year. It is what it is. Um, but it looked like over the course of that fight, it looked like he gained his confidence. Um, you know, doesn't have the same sharpness in his movement. Um, defensively, it looks like he slipped a little bit versus what I, I, I used to see in the guy. But um, I, I don't know what you do with him moving forward. I definitely wouldn't try to get a rematch with uh, Sor Rung Vasai. I think that ship has sailed. I leave that alone. Um, but I, I respect the guy for trying to fight on and not wanting to end his fight in the fa end his career in the fashion that it looked like it was going to end, you know, in that rematch against Sor Rung Vasai. Um, I salute all of these guys that try to come back, you know, and, and uh, refuse to go out on, um, you know, terms that aren't commensurate with the rest of their career, the bulk of their career when we saw them at the top of their game. Salute to him getting that win. Um, Jaime, um, Jaime Monguia against uh, Brandon Cook. The kid is still really raw. He's an exciting puncher. He's making it work for him. As, they, as Max discussed on the telecast, he's being matched perfectly. Um, you know, it's awesome that the guy, you know, he's trying to fight six times this year, wants one more before the end of the year. Um, there's a discussion of him possibly being a future opponent for Triple G or for the winner of this fight of the main event tonight in Triple G and, Ca and uh, Canelo Alvarez. Um, one of the big points on there that I really agree with and I thought it was, uh, you know, interesting commentary was, you know, how to bring him along and, and how to, uh, important it is, you know, to, to, to have great matchmaking for him to be successful and to give him time to grow into, uh, being that champ, you know, to be in a world champion at 21 coming out of nowhere, just two or three fights ago, not many of us knew who he was, but, um, they're making it work. Brandon Cook, I believe was in the top five of the WBO at a, a super welterweight, at least top 10, no less than that. And, uh, you know, he kept trying to shoot some uppercuts uh, from an awkward angle or very coming up from very low. And then he was coming up from very high uh, on that overhand right of his that he kept shooting. And I I thought that Jaime was going to run into one of those or get clipped by one of those because the guy was basically in survival mode. Uh, the most of uh, most of the fight, but um, he just didn't have much for a guy in uh, Munguia that that weighed 170 plus pounds or whatever it was. Uh, with this being a super welterweight, um, you know, title defense or title fight. Uh, wow, I mean, he was moving the guy around with the shots. Like I said, the last round and a half, the guy was in um, survival mode. And uh, was just getting bullied around the ring. You know, salute to him for, for even fighting on and trying to make it work and trying to find a way to stand his ground. Um, but I thought, 
uh, looking at some of my notes, I thought that first knockdown, uh, he got caught with a big shot in the back of his head because he was doing so much ducking and leaning forwards. Um, what was that? Yeah. Round three, the first knockdown, uh, looked like a, a, a punch from the back of the head, uh, is what got him in all types of trouble. But you know, that, that it, it didn't matter. It was what it was. Uh, I will say, you know, Jaime was working, um, almost exclusively behind a one, two, um, you know, you're going to need a more complex entry into the pocket than that when you get up against some of the better guys and the guys who aren't going to be retreating, you know, completely. He's going to have to add some other stuff to that. But once he got himself in the front door and, uh, you know, pushed Cook to the ropes and roughed him up and was just banging him with everything, whether it was a clean shot or not, uh, like the, the, the crew was mentioning, you know, very violent fighter. A lot of impact on his shots. Um, and he's he was he's just bigger than uh Cook. So interesting fight for him, good win. It's it's, it's a uh you know confidence builder, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um I still wouldn't wanna I still don't think it'd be pretty if you put him in there with Jared Hurd, the unified champion at Super World the way, or if you've put him in there against uh Jamel Charlo, uh, you know, I don't think he would be successful. So I don't know how you buy time while he continues to develop with him holding a championship, you know, with a world title holder. I don't know how you continue to buy him time without putting him in there with some somebody real. But uh, like I said, I had never heard of uh, Cook before tonight. But good win for him. Uh, Spike, Gary Spike O'Sullivan getting uh, absolutely blown away in the first round by David Lemieux. Uh, Lemieux was a thunderous puncher, you know, a powerful puncher. Uh, he said that he was 50, after the fight, he said that he was 50% um, against uh, Billy Joe Saunders a couple months ago. And um, that's interesting that you would say that now. But, perform. I mean, an uh, awesome performance tonight, big display of, of punching power, um, you know, not everybody is going to be as willing um, or cooperative as uh, Billy, uh, as uh, Spike O'Sullivan was tonight. I thought Spike would box him a little bit more. Uh, you knew that the guy has great power and he, he does well when guys stay in the pocket and stand in front of him. And um, you had to see the difference in size. You had to feel, although he, 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 he startled um uh, Spike startled Billy. I mean, I keep wanting to call him Billy Joe. Uh, he startled uh, David Lemieux a couple of times uh, with some jabs and, uh, you know, caught him with a couple of good shots for as long as the fight lasted. But, um, you know, ultimately he got caught inside of a, a big one, a big one, too, that he was firing when the left hand came in and caught him on the sweet spot and put him down. Referee only made it to like four or five or something before calling the fight off. Um, a great moment for Lemieux. And, you know, maybe it was enough to push him into a championship showdown with uh, tonight's winner, uh, Canelo Alvarez. Um, we'll see. I don't know. But it, it's still, he might be able to beat up any, you know, B minus and C and below guys that you put in front of him, but I always see him coming up short against any of the uh, the, the world class guys, unless you know the belt happens to make it make its way into uh, one of those champions that um, there's a lot of questions on and just happens to be the right situation. I don't I don't foresee him doing well against a uh, Canelo. We already know what happened with Triple G, so. Um, Anyway, that led us to 90 minutes of them scrambling to fill that time, talking about random stuff, going to different, um, you know, videos and, and cut ups of this and that and, and interviews and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it just seems like, you know, for the price of this and, you know, maybe you thought this card was stacked on paper. It ended up not being stacked. 
Uh, it seemed like it would have been a contingency plan if 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 there were some early endings, especially in the Munguia and uh, Cook fight. You couldn't have thought that was going past five or six rounds. Um, you you knew that um the guy that um did I even write his name down? The guy that that um uh, his name Gonzalez no. The guy that Gonzalez fought, I didn't even write his name down. No disrespect to him. But, um, you know, with him being knocked out in the first round, you, you couldn't have thought that that fight was going past the midway point. And then, um, you know, Sullivan and, and Lemieux, you know Lemieux's a big puncher, so there's always the, the possibility that it can be ended early. So shame on these guys for having people stand around uh, you know, for 90 minutes and, and not have some kind of, some kind of swing bout uh, something. Uh, you know, that was just, uh, that was pretty poor planning in my opinion. But let's get to the big fight of the night. Uh, the rematch, Saul Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin. Um, I'm not going to beat around the bush. You know, I picked Canelo by decision. And not solely because of the refereeing situation. I mean, the, the judging situation or, you know, the judges being, um, you know, in the pockets of uh, Golden Boy, any of that type of stuff. I just thought off performance alone um, that that uh, trip, I mean, that Canelo would do enough to uh, edge out a, a seven to five victory, possibly an eight four. I did think he was going to drop a uh, triple G one time before this fight was over. But the way that it actually played out, um, I thought going into the, I, I struggled with the with the decisive uh, winner in round one, because there wasn't much of a feeling out period. They got to uh, action, you know, it really looked like around thirteen the way that the fight started out. So um, I struggled as Triple G was busier and he was on his jab, and seemed to be getting a little more contact than um, what Canelo was doing. I believe all three judges even had the first round for, um, for Triple G. But anyway, uh, going into the round, to the final round, going into the 12th round, I really felt like uh, Canelo needed that round to secure a draw, to not lose the fight. Um there was a, a period of the fight in that middle third of the fight where it looked like there was a lot of fight left and there wasn't much Gennady Golovkin left. There was a, a moment in the fight where he, you know, he was breathing very hard. He was taking a lot of deep breaths um, in between contact and in between, um, you know, uh, flurries and whatnot. And it didn't look like he was going to stand up. And, uh, somehow or another, over the last four to five rounds of the fight, the guy just just uh, gutted it out. And to both guys' credit, I will say the complaints or the, the shortcomings that I had with each fighter in the first fight, I thought both guys addressed those issues in this fight. And, um, you know, it wasn't pretty. Some of the boxing that we saw from Golovkin, you know, over the second half when he was just trying to uh, work himself back into the fight and find his second win, um, it wa it wasn't pretty. He kept doing that high overhand right that was kind of touching Golovkin right on the top of his head. His footwork was was kind of trash, uh, but it looked like. Later in the fight, I don't know if maybe Canelo was was uh, hunched over a little bit more, but it looked like Gennady Golovkin looked like he had more reach. Looked like he was uh, like his what is it inch inch and a half height advantage. Uh, he just looked like a completely different fighter when he decided to fight back and work himself back into the fight and respond to his trainer and really go for it. And uh, I felt like I've been a little critical of of Abel, uh, you know, with Barrera. I believe, and then with uh, Marat Gassiev, or Gassiev versus Usyk, but I felt like uh, Abel worked well with Triple G tonight, which is probably his money man anyway, um, but I felt like he told him the, the, the right thing at the right time throughout the course of the fight, 
and was very consistent, you know, with giving him the right information. And uh, when he told him to sit down and fight with this guy, you know, he can't hurt you. Let's mix it up. Let's fight him. You know, let's not run. Let's not uh, abandon any game plan. Although we still didn't get the body work that was missing from the first fight. I, I thought I saw somewhere where he only had six uh, body punches, which was, a you know, two less than the first fight. That that number might be wrong. I didn't write that down in my notes. But, um, yeah, I thought, trip, I thought Canelo needed that 12th round. Um, I don't know if that was the 11th or the 12th when um, the big uppercut, the huge uppercut, probably the best punch of the fight came from uh, Triple G. And then there was a, a second uppercut in there that kind of wasn't as punishing. But um, I didn't I didn't get that 12th round to uh, Canelo. So I guess I would have been good with the draw. We know that the public, the boxing public, really couldn't have... Um, wouldn't have been okay with the draw. So that's why I felt like, um, you know, two of the judges found a way to give that 12th round to uh, Canelo. And uh, we have a uh, majority decision with uh, two of the judges having it 115, 113, uh, one having it, uh, what, 114, 114 uh, for uh, Triple G. I'm not going to hold it against Triple G for uh, standing in there and and doing an interview with uh, Max Kellerman. Um, I think his silence says everything. I think he was disappointed. I think uh, he felt that he put forth the effort over the, the last four to five, maybe even six rounds when it, it looked bad for him. But uh, he sat there and tried to figure out how to uh, offset or negate um, Canelo's counterpunching. And, you know, he didn't show that type of courage last time, uh, but he did this time. Like I said, he sat there and tried to figure it out on the job. That's a difficult thing to do against a fighter the caliber of uh, Saul Alvarez, but I thought he did it. And I felt like when he just went for it and mixed it up and, and made it ugly – and just banged and got what he could get. I felt like he um, came out on top with those exchanges. And uh, like I said, I thought he did enough in those last four to five rounds. Uh, having, uh, what was that, the 10th round, 11th? 10th um, from around 10 when um, he dazed uh, Canelo Alvarez. You know, when he had him um, stunned briefly. Like I said, I, I thought... I thought uh, Triple G did everything that we could have asked of him. And everything that I had a hard time with giving him the first fight, I thought he brought it here. And, uh, you know, Canelo changed it up much like last week when we didn't expect, you know, the, the tactical um, the tactical way that uh, Porter chose to fight the opening rounds in his fight against Garcia. Tonight it was shocking to see... Uh, to, to see Canelo um, coming forward, you know. And uh, and I don't hold it against uh, Triple G that he couldn't push Canelo back and that he couldn't impose his will on him. Triple G's never really been a real inside fighting, inside fighting or in fighting physical presence. Just like kind of similar to uh, Kovalev, he seems to have done most of his damage from mid or from mid-range or from outside, keeping guys at the end of his power, and then, um, you know, maybe running over some of the smaller guys. But he never really did it with all of the, uh, you know, the forearm and the uh, the stiff arm and um, pause and um, really being a real physical, uh, you know, maybe even dirty fighter. That's never been his style. So... Because he didn't really have anything, uh, any any answer for um, you know being stalked and and being and being uh, forced on his back foot sometimes. But I felt like both guys kept it in the middle of the ring for the majority of the night, and uh, I just felt like Triple G just found a way to make it work. And uh, I, I I like that he responded to his coach. Uh, 
you know, it was times when his when his stamina, you know, started to uh, fail him. He was getting beat up. He, you know, early in the fifth, I mean, fourth through maybe uh, sixth round, it, you know, the damage was starting to show on his face, and uh, you know, he moved out of just that jab and started uh, mixing it up and just being a a, a real warrior. And so, um, like I said, I felt Canelo needed that twelfth round. I don't think he got it. So I think on my car, you know, I finished up with 115, 113 in favor of uh, Triple G. I'm not mad that uh, Canelo won it. You know, it was that kind of fight. I will say some of the earlier fight, um, some of the earlier, uh, in some of the earlier rounds, one, it was a difficult fight to score on television. I felt like uh, a lot of the, in the earlier rounds, I felt like there was a lot of body work or some punching that uh, Canelo did that based on the angle of the camera, when his back was to us and Triple G was in front of him, um, you know, where we couldn't see him, I, there was some punches that were going on that I couldn't tell if those punches landed or not because I couldn't see through, obviously couldn't see through Canelo. So if I couldn't see it, I couldn't really score those punches for uh, Canelo. So, um, but you know, the body work was there. He banged with the uh, triple G all night, but I, I do think that triple G landed some of the more, uh, powerful shots of the night. And I just felt like, like I said, over the last four or five rounds, um, I thought he brought the fight to Canelo. And, um, like I said, that 10th, 11th and 12th, this 36 year old man went out there and tried to do things that we've never really seen him do before. Um, so I won't keep repeating myself again. Um, you know, I had it 115, 113 in favor of uh, Gennady Golovkin. Um, we know the winner was Canelo. Um, congratulations to him. Congratulations on a great night of boxing. You know, I think that was what the first pay per view fight in North America. Uh, for the year, uh, if not one of it, I mean, it was the biggest fight of the year. So uh, we'll see what happens next. You know, there are already some some talks, you know, uh, Triple G acquiescing and to, uh, you know, getting involved with or, uh, you know, bringing the trilogy to fruition. That's probably what happens anyway. Once they sit, once cooler heads prevail and, um, you know, I don't see either of these guys wanting to fight. The other top uh, middleweights that are out there, especially in a Charlo or uh, the winner of Derevyanchenko and uh, Jacobs, uh, Billy Joe Saunders and uh, Andre winner. You know, I don't see the one of these guys facing them. So uh, I think we'll probably get that trilogy. And I think that's why Triple G understands what's before him now is, uh, you know, if he should agree to that trilogy, he's going to be a year older or uh, six or seven, eight, nine months older. And uh, I thought he gave it everything he had to give tonight. So uh, to think that he could replicate that same um, effort, you know, next May or something, that's got to look like a, a, a daunting task for uh, for Triple G. But, um, you know, salute to Abel Sanchez who catches his his flack and eats his crow. But he said, um, you know, he thought the judging, they had a fine set of judges uh, tonight. And he said they saw from their respective angles. And, uh, you know, it seemed like he was uh, good with the decision. Um, so, look, there's nothing else to say. I hope every, everybody had a great night here in Dayton, Ohio. I was really impressed with the turnout at the uh, the movie theater. Um, it wasn't, you know, I was going in there trying on my high and mighty, you know, I'm a boxing uh, podcast host, boxing journalist. I don't want nobody this and that. And uh, I felt like it was a very knowledgeable crowd in there. They got excited at the right moments. Um, it was kind of split. Um, shout out to Dayton, Ohio. I didn't know it was that many Mexican uh, boxing fans in there, but I heard some Spanish being spoken. The Mexican couple that set uh, a seat over from me, very cool guy. Uh, actually, I, I held the door 
going into the movie theater for him and his girlfriend. And then, of course, it was the double doors. So they turned right around and held the door for me. And, uh, you know, we kind of exchanged some quick pleasantries before getting into the fight. Then I happened to walk around a little bit um, before going into the movie theater. But then once I get up to my seat uh, and I'm sitting there for a few minutes, uh, the, the young guy and his girlfriend actually come walking up the stairs to where I was sitting. And then lo and behold, they were, um, you know, in the assigned seating, like I said, just a seat down from me. And uh, he was a big Canelo Alvarez fan. And, uh, you know, he had Alvarez winning it with no question. Uh, probably gave Alvarez like the first four or five rounds straight on his card. Uh, so anyway, uh, I guess he used to fight and he said he hurt himself, had some kind of injury and he couldn't continue fighting anymore. So, uh, you know, I don't know the young guy's name. I didn't get that or whatnot, but um, I just thought it was cool to meet some local fans and, and hear some different perspectives on boxing and whatnot. So well, that's kind of my thing is being out around people and, um, you know, interacting with others and seeing other people enjoying the sport and whatnot. So I thought that was pretty cool. Again, uh, we'll get back next week for the uh, Povetkin, for the Anthony Joshua versus Povetkin Everybody get ready to get your free trial, free one month trial membership for the uh, zone. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about that fight next week. Probably get this podcast out there for next week. Maybe expand on a couple of things that I've just ran through in these last 20 some minutes. So, again, please hit that subscribe button. Check me out. Let's get into some comments. Um some banter back and forth on whatever, you know, whatever your thoughts were. Um, check out tomorrow's uh, Sunday sermon from Eric Duran. It'll be very interesting to see how he, uh, you know, what his reaction is to the fight. And, um, you know, shout out to Karen A. Tate for uh, lending some thoughts to the, uh, the, the BDB bout breakdown that we put out there for this fight. Uh, she was our special guest analyst. So uh, me and her picked the correct outcome. No shouts, e I mean, no shots, ED. But uh, again, I thought it was a great night for everybody. To my round by round boxing family, uh, Peter Nieves had to have is a winner in my book because he was out there at the fight at T-Mobile and saw this live. So I'm gonna get over here to round by round and check out uh, what his thoughts were, or what his coverage were, uh, coverage was about, and uh, he might be on the podcast. Uh, that'll come out later on in the week. So, uh, hey, everybody, have a great night. Like I said, again, please hit that subscribe button. Maybe hit that like. If you want, hit that dislike. And, um, you know, check me out on uh, Twitter at BiteDownBoxing.com. Also on Instagram at BiteDownBoxing. I'm sorry, on Twitter at BiteDownBoxing. And then uh, if you want to holler at me, my Twitter is actually uh, at E underscore Pluribus, P-U-L-R-I-B-U-S underscore Wood, W-O-O-D. Again, good night. Peace.